99% of Excel users don't fully understand how logical tests work, and it shows. This knowledge can be the difference between writing monstrous nested if formulas with 15 ifs and 5 ceiling functions, like this, or writing simple formulas that achieve the same result without using if at all. Logic is at the core of Excel, powering advanced filters, formulas, conditional formatting, and more. In this video, we'll explore key logic functions and or not and exclusive or and how they work. Plus, I'll take you behind the scenes to show how Excel uses logic in arrays for calculations beyond these built-in functions. Let's dive in. The logic functions and or not and exclusive or will return a single true or false result. These are Boolean values and in Excel, they're a data type all their own. Boolean logic is a form of algebra where all values are reduced to either true or false. In Excel, true can also be represented with one and false with zero. Let's say you're hosting an exclusive preview of a new product line for your most loyal customers. Invitations will be sent to those who spent $100 or more and have 300 or more points. In column F here, I can use the AND function to find which customers spend $100 or more and have 300 or more points. The AND function takes a series of logical tests and returns true where all tests are true and false where any test is false. Close parentheses on my AND formula. You can see that one returns true. So Arianova, Jackson Phoenix, Anne Rowan Ember all meet the criteria and they're going to get an invitation. Now we need to know how many invitations to send out. I can convert these true and false values into their numeric equivalents of one and zero with the double unary at the front, which is just two minus signs. We get one, copy it down, and now I can sum them up. But I'll undo that because there's another way we can add them up without coercing them first, and that's inside the sum function. So we add the double unary here and then simply reference the cells containing the true and false values and sum returns three. However, I don't even need to use the AND function. I can simply write the logical tests inside parentheses. So this one is greater than or equal to 100. And then I'm going to multiply the logical tests. The next one is greater than or equal to 300. Close parentheses and I get one. Let's copy it down. So now I have ones and zeros and I can simply add them up. Notice I haven't used the double unary here, and this is because performing a math operation, in this case multiplication, on Boolean values is what coerces them into their numeric equivalents. At this point you might wonder which is best. The answer? Whichever you prefer. There's no clear winner here, but the AND function has some limitations compared to pure logical tests, which I'll cover later. For these solutions, we're still calculating the logical tests row by row before adding them up to see how many invitations to send. In this case, it makes sense because I need to identify which customers to send invites to, not just how many to print. But that's not always necessary, so I'll share a different approach later. For now, there are a few takeaways to recap. The double unary coerces true and false values into their numeric equivalents, as do math operations. And multiplying logical tests is the same as using the AND function. Your next promotion is to send a discount coupon to individuals who've either spent more than 100 or have over 300 points, or both. I can use the OR function here, where the last purchase is greater than 100, or points are greater than 300. Close parentheses. And we get true for the first result. Let's copy it down. The OR function takes a series of logical tests and it returns true where one or more tests return true and false where all tests are false. Again, I can coerce the Boolean true and false values into their numeric equivalent with the two minus signs, also known as the double unary, and then we get ones and zeros. And I can write it without using OR at all. Simply wrap your logical tests in parentheses. First one is where the purchases are greater than 100. And then for all, we use the plus sign between our logical tests. The next one is where points are greater than 300, close parentheses, and here we get two. Let's copy it down. Now the reason we're getting two here is because our first logical test returns true, as does our second one. 
And when we perform a math operation, we convert true into its numerical equivalent of one. So we're effectively adding one plus one to give two. Now, in some cases, this might be with the desired result. But here, I only want to give customers who met either criterion one coupon. So the fix for this is to wrap it in the sign function. Simply wrap it around your logical tests. Sign converts positive values to one, zeros remain as zero, and negative values are minus one. And now I can simply add the results to get the number of coupons required. In this scenario, there's no benefit to using the sign function over the or function, but later we'll see where sign may be useful. Takeaways in this example are adding logical tests treats them as or criteria, and the sign function can be used to convert results to one where more than one logical test is true. Next, we'll target customers who've not made a purchase yet with a special introductory offer to encourage their first purchase. We can identify customers who haven't made a purchase with the not function. So not greater than zero, close parentheses, let's copy it down. And there's only one customer who hasn't made a purchase. Of course, we can also write this with a simple logical test where the sales value equals zero. The customer hasn't made a purchase, copy it down. Of course, we get the same result. Now let's say we wanted to identify customers who had made a purchase. It could be written with not like this. So where purchases are not equal to zero, let's copy it down. And this time this customer gets a false result. Alternatively, we could write it as a pure logical test where the sales are not equal to zero. Let's copy it down. And again, we get the same result there. Which is best? There's no distinct winner here. But personally, I find the double negative in a not function more difficult to write than the simple logical tests. The XOR function stands for exclusive or, and it returns true when the number of true inputs is odd and false when the number of true inputs is even. I know it hurts your head. The easiest way to think of exclusive or is with the light switch scenario. Let's say we have two light switches that control the same light one at each end of a hall or staircase. The light is only on when the two switches are in different positions. For our next promotion, we'll invite customers to a special product preview event who've either spent less than $100 or have less than 200 points, but not both. Like the other functions, we simply enter the logical test we want. In this case, where the last purchase is less than 100 and points are less than 200. Close parentheses, let's copy that one down and you can see the results there in green. Now, of course, we can also write this with logical tests, but we need to nest them in the is odd function. So the first logical test is where sales are less than 100 plus where points are less than 200. Close parentheses on my second logical test. Close is odd. We should get the same results. Copy it down. Is odd returns true when the number of true results are odd and false when the number of true results are even. Which approach is best? In terms of calculation performance, they're comparable. However, if you need an array of Boolean values, is odd is the better choice because exclusive or only returns a single result. I'll cover returning arrays in more detail shortly. This time we want to give each customer who has not made a purchase a super bonus of two invitations to our next product launch so they can bring a plus one. With if, we'd write if the last purchase equals zero, then two else zero. Close parentheses, copy it down, and one customer qualifies. However, when we require a numeric result from a logical test, the if function is often redundant. For example, if the last purchase equals zero, we're going to get true or false. And we can simply multiply that by two. If it's false, then zero times two is zero. Where it's true, it's going to return true. And true times two is the same as one times two. So no double unary is required because I'm multiplying the result of the logical test by two, which coerces it into its numeric equivalent. There's no standout winner on calc performance here. The takeaway is that if often isn't required when the outcome of the formula is numeric. Mastering Excel can feel overwhelming with so much to learn and years of trial and error. That's why I created the Excel Expert course 
to fast track your learning with a structured hands-on approach and personalized support from me. In this course, you'll go from mastering the basics to applying advanced Excel techniques with confidence. The lessons are short, practical, and designed to maximize your efficiency in minimal time. And I'll be there to mentor you every step of the way. If you're ready to level up your Excel skills, check out the course via the link in the description and pinned comment. Nested ifs, or the newer ifs function, enable you to perform a logical test, return a result if the test is true. If not, it will move on to the next logical test and so on until it finds a true outcome. In this scenario, we want to reward customers with a coupon worth 20% of their last purchase where they spent more than $200 or 10% of their last purchase where they spent more than 100. We can write this with a nested if or the newer ifs function. Let's try ifs. So where the last purchase is greater than 200, then we're going to take the last purchase times 0.2. Else, if the last purchase is greater than 100, then we're going to take the last purchase times 0.1. Now, if both of these are false, then the last criteria must be true and they'll get nothing, or zero. Press enter, let's copy that one down. Or we could simplify it with pure logical tests. So equals, and then inside parentheses, where the last purchase is greater than 200, then we're going to multiply it by the last purchase times 0.1, plus the next logical test, so where the last purchase is greater than 100, times the last purchase times 0.1 press enter, and we get the same results. Note here that both logical tests are performed, which is why both only calculate 10% of the coupon value, because once they're combined, customers who spent more than 200 will receive 20% in total. Which approach is better? Well, nested if formulas are more efficient because they stop at the first logical test that returns true, while pure logical test formulas and the newer ifs function calculate all tests irrespective. The key takeaway is nested ifs stop at the first true result, so the order of logical tests is crucial. For a deeper dive, check out my comprehensive tutorial on if, nested if, and ifs formulas. Or, and, exclusive or and not can only return a single value, that is they can't spill results or return arrays of boolean values when nested inside other functions. This means you can't use them in functions like filter, sum, some product, etc. We can use pure logical tests with multiply for and and plus for or. For example, let's say we want to know how many customers spent more than $100. Here I can reference all of the last purchase cells, greater than 100, press enter, and the results spill. That is, it returns an array of Boolean values. Now I can also do this in a single cell. Equals sum. We're going to sum them up. Let's use the double unary to coerce them parentheses around my logical test, greater than 100, close my logical test, close sum, press enter, and we get three. So it's found three customers who meet the criteria. Next, let's find the value of purchases where customers spent more than 100 or have more than 200 points. With pure logical tests, I can reference the whole range of purchases, apply the logical test, which is where the sales value is greater than 100, or, so we use plus for the second logical test, where the points are greater than 200. Close parentheses, press enter, and my array spills. And you can see I need to wrap the logical tests in the sign function to avoid double counting. Because here I'm performing my logical tests on two different columns, there's a risk that both criteria could be true. And we can see that here with two returned three times. We fix that by wrapping the whole thing in the sign function, adding a parentheses at the front and the end. Now we get ones and zeros. Lastly, to calculate the value of these sales, I simply multiply the logical tests by the purchase price. Press enter. Now I've got the purchase values. And then to add them up, wrap the whole thing in the sum function and we get 735. Or what if we want a list of customers whose last purchase is more than 100 or have more than 200 points. I can use the filter function for this, which is available in Excel 2021 onward. Filter references the array or cell range of the table that you want returned. So I'll select the customer ID, name, last purchase, and points. Then we need to specify which rows to return with an array of Boolean values, one for each row. 
Remember, or, and, not, and exclusive or can't return arrays. So here we must use pure logical tests to identify which rows to include. So we're going to start by wrapping the first one in parentheses. And I want to see where purchases are greater than 100, close parentheses, or, so that's plus, where points are greater than 200. Close parentheses on my two logical tests, close filter, press enter, and there we have a list of the customers who meet the criteria. Now, if I just evaluate the logical tests, you can see it returns two for some rows. Now, I could fix this with the sign function, but here's the twist, and something 99.9% .9 of Excel users don't realize. Excel will treat any positive or negative number as true where it requires a Boolean value. So it doesn't matter here if some rows are returning two or one, both are considered true. This also applies in other areas of Excel where Boolean results are required, like conditional formatting rules, etc. With filter, there's no risk of it returning a row twice. It simply wants to know if a row should be included or not. Therefore, I don't need to use the sign function to convert the array to ones and zeros. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to filter. It's one of my favorite functions. And now that you have logic in Excel mastered, you're ready to maximize the use of filter to do some amazing things. So watch this video next to get my insider tips on the filter function. I'll see you there.